All right, uh, we are live. Uh, welcome to our monthly, what's become a monthly event, our Facebook Live event for the Harvard Community Unit School District 50. Uh, it is uh, a pleasure today to be with uh, Tom Cardamone. And I'd love to tell you that Tom and I are lifelong friends, and we go way back, but we have only known each other for now three months, essentially, yeah. in December. Yeah. So exactly. Tom is our new junior high principal, and it's yep. just such a pleasure to be able to introduce uh, you to everyone. Um, when we did have the transition of principals, yep. we had the opportunity to meet, and then we just, since then, it's been like, okay, let's go. Yep. Uh, drink. Absolutely. They always call it drinking through the fire hose. Is yes. that kind of how it, it feels? It definitely is drinking from fire hose. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's a lot coming at me at a quick pace, but it's a lot of fun. Sure. It's, it's been great. Well, let's get to know uh, you, Tom. It's, uh, it's It's been kind of fun. <laughs> Tom and I have this already uh, little uh, feud of uh, Iowa versus yes. uh, Minnesota. So you're yeah. a Minnesota guy, but tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the things yep. that uh, make you tick. Yeah, I am a Minnesota guy, born and bred in Minnesota. I grew up there, went lived there all the way through high school. I went to college in Boston, went to Boston University. Thought I was going to be a doctor because my dad was a doctor, mm -hmm. and freshman chemistry changed that idea very, very quickly. <laughs> right. So it's another story for another time, yeah, which my sure. kids really like to remind me yeah, of. Of course. Um, I have an identical twin brother, which is a little bit unique, and we uh, we went to different schools. He went to Michigan State. I went to Boston University, and it was the first time we'd been apart from each other, and that was pretty yeah. one of those first grown-up learning to live on your own experiences. Okay, everyone, just uh, stop you in the middle of the story. Everyone on Twitter needs to follow uh, Rex. Chapman. He has these incredible videos, yeah. and I just saw one about these two uh, newborn twins okay. that actually reach out and find oh, each yeah. other's hand and grab it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's just the sweetest thing. Yeah. So that's a real thing, the, the separation of your twin. That is a real thing. Apparently, there's also stories from my parents that we were in our separate cribs and would be put to bed at night, and in the morning, one of us would be in the other's crib. <laughs> really, we yeah. shifted our cribs across yeah. the room yeah. somehow and climbed wow. into the other one's crib. So yes, it is It is wow. definitely a real thing. Wow. He got into a car crash once, a really simple one, yeah. but a car crash, and I just knew something was wrong. And really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. And he's That's actually really the reason I ended up out in Illinois as well. Oh, okay. So How'd that he, happen? He had a job as a golf club, assistant golf club manager okay. at uh, Conway Farms Golf Club in Lake Forest. Mm -hmm. I had re or retired. I had graduated from college and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, uh, stay home or move back home to Minnesota with my parents, awesome. stay in Boston and try to get a teaching job there or uh, end up living with my twin brother who was sure. in the Illinois area and he got me a job bartending at a golf club. All right. And then my as weird fate would have it, my older brother and my older sister both ended up out in the Chicago area as yeah. well. So we all end up out there. And that, wow. so I did that for a little bit, and then started substitute teaching, and uh, did that for a really long time, or yeah. did that for a year and turned into a teaching gig. Good. So uh, teaching was, uh, and F, that became like the first like introduction to your former district where you're yep. doing that teaching English, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, what grades? So as a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade language arts teacher, I had an interesting progression where I started off. I was hired as a substitute teacher, okay. and after a couple of weeks, they asked me to be a teaching assistant, which was great because it was, you know, guaranteed excitement, getting to be in the building every single day. I really looked at it as a great opportunity just to sort of make a connection to a building. And so I was a substitute teacher for, I'm sorry, a teaching assistant for the rest of that year. And then I became a sixth grade language arts teacher for two years. And then I taught seventh and eighth grade language arts for seven years. Right, right. Yeah. Wow, that's quite a progression. Yeah. Um, one of the things that was really, when we got to know you, Tom, was exciting was just that you had such length of experience yeah. as both an assistant principal and a principal. Yeah. And that's, um, I don't think you can underestimate yeah. the value of that for a principal, just being through the experiences Absolutely. and knowing how to handle situations mm -hmm. and talk to students and talk to families and teachers and kind of organize uh, and coalesce this big group of people mm -hmm. that, you know, have kind of been going different directions, yeah. uh, to be honest with you. And so yeah. how has that experience kind of um, let you see with wide eyes, but experienced mm -hmm. eyes, the new situation in Harvard Junior High. I think one thing that I've always sort of stuck to is that in order to be a really effective assistant principal or principal, you have had to have that classroom experience. And that's yeah. something that I've always sort of latched on to. And especially also then when you, I, I'm fortunate, I have two children of my own. They're both high school age now. And when you're a parent, I think you really recognize mm -hmm. a different lens of what, how you're looking at working with students, working yeah. with adults. It just it mm -hmm. just changes that. And I think yeah. the experiences that I've had in my career, 22 plus years in education, although shifting from one community to a different community, there's always going to be those 
unexpected twists and turns. At the end of the day, kids are kids, teachers are teachers, parents are parents, families are families, and it's just how do you make, how do you build that connection with people? Yeah. And it's about listening, and it's about kind of diving back into your memory bank of these are different things that, like an experience I can draw from that maybe happened eight years ago, but is very similar to something that's happening right now and working with somebody in a coaching realm or whatever it might be. So it's, it's just the years of experience in all the different realms, being a coach, being a Washington DC field trip <laughs> supervisor, everything lends right. itself to a different way right. to kind of work together with somebody. And one of the things that I that really will always stick with me uh, that kind of reveal that experience you have is you were talking about junior high kids. And I think, I always tell junior high teachers or administrators, they're the first ones into heaven. Because that's just always one of the most challenging things is yeah. to deal with these 12, 13, yep. 14 year olds as their hormones are crashing Absolutely. around and they're growing and they don't know how to make sense of a lot of things. But yeah, they're trying real hard and they don't yep. want to let anyone admit they don't know everything. Um, but you said something that really kind of stuck and it was like, you want to be kind, but not nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just thought that was really profound in the sense of that's the way, that's kind of what junior high kids need. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's that it's, it's nice is obviously a, it's a wonderful thing to be, but nice can be very surface level mm -hmm. and kindness is you really build that depth with the capacity of the relationships that you have. You're really doing that listening. It's very simple to walk past somebody in the hallway, say hello, and not even make eye contact. And that's, you're being nice, you're doing the pleasantry mm -hmm. of saying hello, but that kindness mm -hmm. of really building that relationship with them because that way the kids know that you care. Yeah. And something else I really believe in strongly is having a kid's heart before you can have their head. Yeah. And, and that's just something I've always believed really, really strongly in education. And I think sometimes we, we veer from that track at times, but you have to have that relationship if, if there's going to be success with the, with the students. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because students are reacting and noticing. They're like, "Hey, we you know we we know the principal and we're talking to him. Yeah. I like that guy." Yep. So it's been kind of fun yeah. for them to yeah. get to know uh, you a little bit yeah. and get that because that's the fun getting to Absolutely. know the kids and the personalities Absolutely. and share in their successes and their struggles. Because yeah. if it weren't for the kids, we certainly wouldn't be here and it wouldn't be as right. as much fun. Although sometimes they make us a little crazy, uh, and dearly we love them and yes. we want to kind of yeah. make them as successful as we possibly can. Absolutely. So, Tom, in this half year, it's maybe a little different, but I know that there's some things you're working on yep. with the school to kind of like uh, address some things that maybe as you're talking with teachers say, hey, this is an issue. What are some of those things that you've kind of dug in uh, mm -hmm. to already at the junior high? Because I know that any parents watching <clears throat> this are saying, you know, I would love to talk to him about some of the things I Absolutely. see and, and some already have, I know, but what are some of the things already that you're kind of noticing and tackling and finding some time to work on? Yeah, I think going back to something I had just spoken about, that super importance of relationship building and that starts in being in the hallway, that starts in greeting kids at the doorway, greeting kids in the hallway, just having that genuine conversation. So really that importance of building that relational capacity is something that just in the first couple of weeks, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it's that reminder of this is what we're here for. We're here for the kids and to build those relationships. Other things that I've really looked at is just general systems of how do we build out mindfully for next year uh, and this year as well. And a, a, a phrase I sort of adopted right away when I came here, it just sort of popped in my head one day was we can do things right or we can do things rushed. And we have to recognize that although we may be looking for immediate change in something or this is, has to happen immediately, mm -hmm. if we're not being mindful and doing it the right way and we just yeah. try to change all of our systems or if we say, it used to be like this, now it's going to be like this. It's not going to be effective for anybody. And so really that, that mindset of how do we build that more intentionally. Also looking at just our master schedule. How are we building more uh, exploratory opportunities for our students? How are we scheduling more intentionally yeah. so that our staff can truly have time to meet with one another to talk about yeah. How are we pl most effectively planning for our students? How are we meeting their our, their needs in a relationship mm -hmm. type of a manner? How are we using that time to grow professionally? And so that's a big structural piece that we're working with and really looking at who is doing what and why and what's our end goal. So that's another thing that we've really done is if we're going to address a problem or present a situation, okay, we're gonna need to come back to it and yeah. check in a week later or check in it even at the end of the day, mm -hmm. what progress was made today, what do we need to do sure. moving forward? And that's, those are pieces that I've just noticed right away yeah. that I really wanna build. And I think for me, a strength I've always looked at is building that relational capacity mm -hmm. and building that community in, inside of a building. And I've seen that already with some of our students and with our staff. And somebody just asked me to say, a student asked me to say, like, why do you say hello to me every day? I said, because that's because you're in our building and I want to get to know 
show you. Yeah. And, and, but but that's where it starts, and it starts with the modeling and starting to see some of that um, filtering yeah. or permeating, I guess is sure. a better word, throughout the entire day. Well, that, I think that matters, and that kind of uh, that relationship component. It has like these concentric circles around it too that kind of get to safety mm -hmm. and comfort and the old uh, saying that I heard, um, it's been kind of working its way around and uh, those of you that remember your Psych 101 is you have to uh, Maslow before you can bloom. Yeah. Yep. And that's just kind of some of the hierarchy of just getting your needs met yep. before you can really get into some of the things. And I think that's something that has been a priority of yep. ours um, this year. And I know you've heard me say this, the priority is just taking care of our yep. students and kind of letting the place feel Absolutely. more safe and calm so that that learning can occur. So Absolutely. Um, uh, Tom, you are a family guy. I so am. tell us a little yep. bit more about your, your family. Yeah, family guy, I my wife Amy and I have been married. I gotta make sure I do this right. We're going on 19 years this, this right. upcoming summer. Congrats. We got married. She was, she is, or she was, excuse me, a dance teacher in the community where right. I was teaching. And so we had a unique, or a unique circumstance where a number of dance students knew her as their dance teacher and then they knew me as uh -huh. their language arts teacher. And a parent one day said, would you be interested in meeting my daughter's dance teacher? I had lived in the Chicago area for about two years, and I don't think I'd had a date. So I was like, dance teacher, that sounds wonderful to me. I'd love to meet your daughter's dance teacher. And we, so we, we finally hit it off. I think it was three right. dates, but we sure, and right. spread out over about nine months. But right. we finally figured go. out the right timing. Like you said, and don't rush. Exactly. Yeah, I, we right. had to get it right. <laughs> don't don't rush, rush it. it. <laughs> yeah, so we did that. And we, so we got married in August of 2001. We have two phenomenal kids. Um, so my wife is Amy, and mm -hmm. she, three years ago, she re retired from mm -hmm. the world of right. dance where she had been sure. for 45 years. She studied dance in high school and in college and professionally for a year and then became wow. a dance teacher. And that was after 45 years, she was ready for something sure, different. Sure. And so she's now a teaching assistant at the 5-6 awesome. uh, school in the community where we live in nice. Grays Lake, Illinois. And then my, we have a daughter, Mia, who is a high school sophomore at Grays Lake Central, and son, Adam, who's a high school freshman at Grays Lake Central. They both are singers. Uh, they're both involved in different ways in theater, more behind the scenes stuff for Mia, more hoping to be on the stage, Adam. And then awesome. my daughter is a uh, second degree black belt in Taekwondo nice. as well. So, wow. um, and my wife learned that one time when she jumped out from behind the corner <laughs> in the kitchen and got punched really hard really? in the arm. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Don't do that. Yeah. So is uh, Taekwondo breaking boards? And there, yep. Is that ever yeah, every now? test. Yep, she does uh, either kicking or punching different kind of breaking boards. And she has a test next week. Uh, have you ever been tempted to give it a shot? Uh, a little bit when I watch <laughs> it, but then I'm realizing I have no clue what no, I'd be doing. Right um, and then, you know, parents are... I still, I got a great family. Um, parents are still in Minnesota, and like I said, my old brother and older sister are about are out in this area as well. Good. Um, you're also a big music yes. uh, fan, and uh, yes. the parents of the junior high have captured. <laughs> and one of the things they're super enthusiastic about yeah. is your newsletters, yeah. um, kind of letting everyone know what's going on this week and some yeah. of the focus. I think that communication yeah. element is something that parents have really at least yeah. responded to me like they're really appreciative. So, yeah. but they they have music <clears throat> quotes yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, music has always played an important role in my life. I perform. I was a performer all the way through. I was in choir all the way through my sophomore year of college. Everyone in my family, my kid, my kids, my siblings, and I. It was mm -hmm. you need. My parents were like, you're either in choir, orchestra, or in band. That was just sure. the rule it was in our house. And so we all were musicians. We all did theater all the way through high mm -hmm. school. And my senior year of high school, I became obsessed with. Or I was introduced to this band, Fish, mm -hmm. and. I, that was also a part of me seeking to go out to the East Coast because sure. that's where they were from. I was like, oh, I could okay. go see this band more sure. often. My parents didn't really appreciate that. but <laughs> um, I, So I sort of just fell in love with this band. And really, as I've gotten older, it's you listen to the music, but you listen to the lyrics, and they, yeah. they change. And it's just, for me, I spend so much time, whether I'm either out on a run listening to music or in the car or whatever it might be, I find these lyrics that seem to have a bigger yeah. message to it. Right. Um, you know, Sometimes they're just silly and they're weird lyrics, but you can find those two or three yeah. words Things or those two or three going. lines that just right. kind of resonate in my head. And it's how do I take that simple message and kind of make it our own and 
help us to kind of believe in some of those same philosophies as well. Good. I'm glad you mentioned running because one of the things that if anyone is out there and uh, feeling the need to run or wa walk yeah. once things warm up, we'll have um, a Team Hornet. Yes. Um, Harvard Hornets is our team yeah. for the MCC, uh, the Human Race, which is a county fundraiser for some of the nonprofits in the county. But it's at a MCC on, I believe, April 27th? April 26th. 26th, yeah. birthday. Okay, oh, very good. Good to have that memory. So, but uh, Tom and I are both going to be yeah. uh, on there, and we hope yeah. you'll join us. We uh, have a, a nice sponsorship, uh, partnership with one of our uh, providers in the industry, and we're giving everyone that signs up for team, uh, or Harvard Hornets, the yeah. team, a t-shirt. So yeah. uh, the first 50 will get that t-shirt, so sign up. It's easy to find online and yeah. sign up, so we'll be there. And uh, yeah, sure. We should also mention uh, that it is National Public Education Week. Mm -hmm. uh, as, obviously, big believers in the Absolutely. importance of public education, that's something that really I think matters to us greatly is um, we're coming into election season a little bit with all the debates and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you were to ask me, one of the primary facets of our uh, democracy is, is producing uh, citizens that are ready to make good decisions mm -hmm. and promote mm -hmm. our culture and our, our way of life. And whether you are this side or this side, well, we want to teach how to think. We want right. to teach how to be good citizens, responsible right. to contribute in our society in meaningful ways. And without public education, that really doesn't happen. If nine out of 10 kids yeah. in our country are products of our public school systems, every investment that we make in public education, uh, either your support or um, coming to games or supporting booster clubs or fundraisers, buying uh, cheese logs or whatever <laughs> it helps, that helps our kids right. have good experiences, that's really a part of all of our responsibility. And we know that the health of your public schools right. in any community is one of the primary assets that kind of maintain or develop your uh, your house, your housing right. costs and the value of your home. So right. we just think there's a lot to be there. So um, Tom, we always end up with ra rapid yep. fire uh, okay. questions after okay. my little editorial there, okay. the Sermon on the Mount. All right. um, uh, go to food when you go to a Mexican restaurant. Oh my gosh, uh, I would have to go with. Oh, of course, now I'm blanking on it. You, you've put me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, uh, enchiladas. Oh yeah, definitely enchiladas. Chicken enchiladas. That would be mine too. Yeah. Oh baby. Although. Yeah. Uh, there's so many good taco places in town. I yep. may be turning my go-to to steak tacos. I can't okay. I'm I, saying that, steak tacos are my good. cheese enchiladas, but that's... I'm, I'm focusing on one specific that's... plate from a restaurant in <laughs> Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So ah, they have the best yeah. enchiladas at No Way Jose's. There we so. go. Okay, well, good <laughs> shout out for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is becoming uh, baseball season. Yes. Do you have a favorite baseball team? I am um, a collection of them all. I love the Cubs, the Twins, and the Red Sox. Kind okay. of all the different all areas that I've lived. Been. Yep, those are the three teams that I will follow all summer long. Um, some people disagree with me, but I think you can have like an American League and a National Absolutely. League team. As long as you yeah. know when they play, who you're rooting yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. when the Cubs and the Twins plays... I will go for the Twins. You go for the Twins. I'll go for the Twins. Kind of, yeah. kind of like when the Bears play the Vikings, you're going to root for Oh, them. I'm always going to root for the Vikings. <laughs> no matter <laughs> what. No matter what. I only root for the Bears if they're playing the Packers. Um, do you have a superstition? I... I don't know if I'd say a superstition. Well, I used to do this thing. I don't know if it's a superstition. Like, if I turned to the right, I would have to turn back to the left. But that was just a weird thing my wife makes fun of me for. Like, like literally, if kitchen? I, like, yeah, it was really weird. Oh, okay. And I think I outgrew that. <laughs> um, okay. But I'd say, I, I don't know if a superstition per se, is, but I've always had a fear of, like, falling. But I'm not afraid of heights. Oh, that okay. Sure. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. We all have little ones. And yeah. I just was reminded of that because I was on a, a flight the other day and I always tap the outside of the airplane before okay. I get in. Okay. I don't know why I do that, but it's just okay. it's good luck to me. And yeah. I haven't um, <laughs> gone down in a crash yet. So there you go. I'm uh, batting 100%. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Very well, good. Tom, we're just so excited you're here. You're I'm doing a great excited. job getting to meet people. Thanks. and. Everyone's enthusiastic about the future of our junior high and, yeah, me too. and excited to have you not only finishing this year, but with us again next Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, yeah, he's here to stay, guys. And so we're excited about that and all the enthusiasm he's yeah. generating in our schools uh, not, and, and with our in our principal ranks, yeah. too. That's been some yeah. fun getting to know people yeah. and work with them. So, uh, Tom, welcome. Thank we're you super, so much. Super happy Absolutely. to have you. you. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Harvard Rising.